Okay, I'm delighted to be joined by former darting great PDC director and Sky commentator Rod Harrington. Rod, thanks for joining us. Uh, um, amazing tournament so far. And then what I've been amazed with is the, is the lesser nations coming through here. Yeah, I think that's a, a good sign that worldwide the game is spreading at this standard. I mean, at one time we used to take the game and do opens where anybody can enter. But what we're doing now, we're taking you know the big boys, the top eight, like we did in Dubai and we're doing it in Australia like we did last year. And I think what that does, it, it takes it in at that level. And then they see all the prize money. And of course, money, you know, it's a horrible name, they say, but money in sport makes it tick. The more money, the more people want to play it. And I think that's why we can see each year the nation's getting stronger and stronger. You know, for the business side of the game, I'd love to see the Australians win it because we're doing a lot in Australia. That would really do it. As a patriot, obviously, I want our boys, the English, to win it. Well, I mean, it's, it's now got down to the nitty-gritty, we're into the last eight. Uh, no real shocks yesterday. I mean, there was a couple of scares, but no real shocks. All the favourites won. And today, the business end of the competition starts. And we start off here very shortly with the match between Northern Ireland and Scotland. Scotland were impressive last night, but I think they've got another gear. Yeah, I think they have. I think uh, with the Irish, Brendan Dolan is obviously their strongest point. So it really rests on his shoulders. But with the Scottish, they're both evenly matched, you know, uh, Wrighty and Thornton, you know, they're about the same standard and they've got the advantage of just coming off that Premier League. They've played, you know, like 15, 16 weeks on that Premier League and that is a big help to them. So they've come off of that. Um, I think Peter Wright has proven over the last 18 months, he's not a one-hit wonder and he's got loads of bottle. You give him a chance, he's going to take it. And the way Robert Thornton has just beaten Phil Taylor several times in the last 18 months proves what a class act he is. Mickey Mansell, this is new to him, but when they're representing their country for some reason, People can dig deep, and that's what Mickey Mansell's got to do. He's got to find that extra gear for representing his country. We know what Brendan Dolan's going to do. I just think that uh, a weak link is an unfair thing, but when you're looking at sport, you've got to be honest about it, and Mickey Mansell's the one where the Scottish have got to attack. And next up, we've got tournament favourites, uh, Holland, which some people are saying England should be the favourites, but they are tournament favourites now against Belgium. And uh, Kim Hybrich yesterday was exceptional. I think it was the most impressive for me. And the bookies make the, the Dutch red-hot favourites here. Yeah, I, I make them right. I mean, when you look at Barnevelt won the Premier League, Michael van Gogh and what he's won, they're, they're definitely the favourites. But I think the Belgians, for me, they've made a silly mistake. What I would do is always have the weaker player playing their strongest one. And I think that Kim should have played Raymond van Barneveld. You know, it's silly to say that Raymond's a weak link, but Michael is on fire at the moment, where Raymond, if you tend to get in front of him, you can batter him a little bit. And if Kim played Raymond and got in front of him, I think then he could, they've got to get a point. But I don't think that the, the Belgium, the way it's situated now, are going to get a point. And I make the, the Dutch red-hot favourites to win it. Yeah, they are red-hot Dutch as well. I mean, uh, it's a, and it's all about heat. I mean, it's a hot day here today. I mean, and we've, we've seen in your career playing in really hot conditions in Blackpool where it's difficult for darts players to hold that grip. I think that's going to be a big factor here this afternoon. It's, it's a massive factor. I was very lucky that my hands never sweat. Um, you know, it, and a lot of players, they over-sweat. And of course, you get a little bit of sweat between the, the dart and the finger, and it kind of like aquaplanes. So that's where they've got to keep the form. And sometimes, if you're a quick thrower, you know, picking that dart up quick don't help when you've got sweat in your hands. Barnevelle, where he just picks it up in a nice fluent action, that will probably help him. Um, but in the in the hall, it's going to push 100 degrees because um, it's really hot out here. Then you've got the heat of the crowd in there. Then you've got the lights on that stage. It's going to be over 100 degrees on that stage. So that's something they're going to have to contend with. Yeah, OK. And the, the next game we've got is a tough one, I think. Australia against uh, Wales there. Bookies making Australia favourites. I know you said you, you, you'd like Australia to do well here for the, for the good of the game. But I think that's a tricky one. Mark Webster didn't play at his best yesterday. He's got to pick it up today. He's certainly got to pick it up and pick it up a lot. I thought Richard Burnett was exceptional yesterday, not only the way he played, but in the captain's role. When he got to them pairs, you know, he stayed solid and, and said to Mark, come on, you've got to help me out here and put a little bit of extra pressure and Mark stepped up to the plate. The Australians were the same. Paul Nicholson, you know, didn't play well at all, where Simon Whitlock played exceptional. So it's going to be interesting to see. I haven't seen the, the markups if Simon Whitlock's playing Mark Webster, because if, if I was the Aussies, that's how I'd have it. And if, it, it and if I was the Welsh, that's how I'd want it. So Burnett can then... And then when you get to the pairs, anything can happen in that pairs. And we see it with the Americans yesterday. They managed to, to get a point and go to the pairs, and any, anything can happen then. So the Welsh are hoping that Richie Burnett wins against Paul Nicholson. And you never know, Mark Webster's a, a former world champion. He's a class act, but he just isn't doing it at the moment. So to get to the pairs, and as Mark Webster's proved... 
over the, the history of this World Cup, he seems to dig deep and find something. Yeah, we met, we spoke to all the guys yesterday. And I think the most passionate. If there's a World Cup award for passionate, it'd be for the Welsh. Yeah, definitely, yeah, the Welsh. Well, in any sport, <clears throat> they're very passionate about. It. I mean, look at their rugby, their darts, anything they do, they're very passionate. And uh, you know, and, and that's where you know digging deep and finding that extra gear comes from. You know, in the belly. Mm. Uh, finally, for last game on, uh, England, again, it's all about red-hot favourites. These are uh, very warm favourites up against South Africa. And I've been quite impressed with the South Africans. Devon Peterson was very impressive yesterday. Graham Trilby looked a little bit nervous to me. Not if he played only his first game, but didn't nervous yesterday. But I don't think this is going to be as one-sided as the bookie suggests. I, I kind of think they are, Nigel. <clears throat> I think that um, Graham Philby will realise where he is today and go, I'm in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Now, he is a seasoned pro, and his age says that he should have a nice bit of confidence and air about him. <clears throat> but I just think that the quarterfinals of the World Cup may hit him. Devon Peterson, we know what it's like. I love Devon Peterson. I'd love to see that young man win a, <clears throat> win a world title because it would spread the game for all the youngsters a lot quicker. He will get up there and he will attack the dartboard because he's one. all the youngsters, they don't care who they're playing. That's why Phil Taylor's been beaten six times by youth players in the last year. They just get up there and attack the dartboard. It's only us older guys that overthink the game. I think that England uh, will win that 2-0, but Devon Peterson is the key. If he can get that point, and again, if it goes to them pairs, anything can happen, because then Devon Peterson will be able to fire Graham Philby up. And uh, It's a dodgy game. Phil Taylor played brilliant yesterday, and AD was off the mark. Um, but seeing today, and he's, he's, he's really good and up for it. I appreciate your time, Ryan. I know you've got to get back to the commentary box for the first game, but thanks very much for joining us here on Tunks and Tales. And if you can give us your thoughts to the semis as well, that'd be all right? Yes, no problem. No problem. I'll speak to you later on. Okay, thank you very much.